Well, everyone, the time is here all about Truvis number 60 coming, coming to you live from the new Truvis lab. I'm not going to talk for now. I'm going to show you the build as it's gone through. And then once we've done that, I've got five balls to share with you. But uh, it's been a long few months getting this building up and running. And I'm so glad that we're finally here. Check out how it all started. Right. So here we are. Day one of the cabin this is where we're going to be installing it i say we other people are going to do it for me but it will be mine uh, we've had this patio recently put in a couple of months ago and the cabin is going to be going on there as you can see we've already got all of the windows and door fittings all the glass is over there and all of the building stuff is through there. Excuse the Barbie castle. So hopefully over the next few months, we're going to watch the cabin turn into where we keep all of the Truvis. I'll keep you posted. Hello everyone. Update. I am here in the cabin. Uh, I have now christened it Truvis Lab because it's going to be where I keep all of my Truvis on show. We have got quite a long way to go, but as you can see, all of the elements of the building are pretty much done. I'm going to, can I change this round? Am I able to change this round? No, you're just going to have to look at me the whole time. But our floor is not yet secure because we're going to have the electrics put underneath it and then hopefully have some lights and some plug sockets. I'm thinking if I put my camera here, this is the corner, I'm thinking about having my desk about here, all of that wall at the back being true is. And then I've also got a cupboard which is gonna go here and hopefully I've got a small leather recliner which I want to go there. However, my desk is massive, so I may have to give up that, that desk. But if we go outside, I'll just show you what it looks like from the outside. As you can see, it's a really small building, but it's perfect for what we're using it for, which is an office. It's got two windows which face the garden, and then you've got the back. I will report back further uh, hopefully when we have some electrics and some flooring okay here we are at the next stage as you can see electrics are in my neighbor Dinesh has been an absolute legend in helping me set all this up I couldn't have done it without him and in addition he also helped me out with a few other things that the people that I paid to get the thing built did really really bad or not at all so I'm very lucky Dinesh thank you so much as you can see he's put the up lighters in I've also done some of the, the painting on the outside if you come in you can see that the paintwork is done the floor is down I've still got a few more bits to go but as you can see the groovy steel conduit going into the plug socket is done there and it's also done down here it's still a bit dodgy in the corners but we can make that flooring cover all the horrible stuff up i've done gray panels at the top and these things on the floor are going to be the surrounds the gun that i need to use this bad boy here i cannot use while my hand is messed up so I'm waiting for the wife to do that. But as you can see, we are very, very close. Got to clean up a little bit of this steel conduit where you can see that I've accidentally hit it with the, the paintbrush, but I can use acetone there. Garden needs a massively good clean, but everything is nearly done and ready to go. See you when it's done. Right, so here we are. It is all complete, bar maybe a little bit of work on the outside with regards to guttering. But the Truvis Lab is up and functioning. I want to take you inside. Come with me. As you can see, Truvis bore as the key. 
welcome to where this channel will be filmed from for the foreseeable that is my desk on the wall we've got some of my marvel lego because i'm still a geek and then if you come round i've also got golf balls and bobbleheads i've laid this carpet now which is nice with my rug i've got an industrial lamp in the corner and the idea is to have Truvis all along that back wall. And I'm hoping I can get a thousand there, but I can't promise anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually, let me see if I can put this in there without switching you off. La la, don't go anywhere. Right. Perfect. So, it's so exciting to finally be here. What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and snip all of the videos um, that I have taken during the build and put them before this video. And then what I'm going to hopefully do is just show you a couple of balls because it wouldn't be all about dreams without balls. So, hopefully have a little montage and then we'll get to the balls. Um, I can't believe I'm finally doing this in here. I'm so glad that you've joined me. Give me a few seconds. And that brings us back to where we are now. Uh, and as I said, I'm gonna show you uh, a few truvers. What I'm also gonna do is I'm also gonna talk to you a little bit about the building that I'm sat in. Um, the building was actually a prefab provided by a company called Dunster House and I have some really good things to say about them and some things that I would recommend. Previously, I think, uh, I don't know, about 15 All About Truvises ago, I did a um, All About Truvis, including Lazarus Wedges, that I bought for my bag. And that is by far my most viewed channel because people were interested about not only using Truvis but actually the wedges themselves and a lot of people have said that my reviews actually help you know help them make a decision and I would like to think that some people may watch this because they're interested in about the build for Dunster House um, and I will get to that at the end uh, this is going to be a long video so if you've not got the popcorn get it now Anyway, the first ball I'm going to share with you is all the way from Japan. Now, you may remember a few all about Truvises ago, um, I got a delivery from Japan from a company called Stiffcom. Now, they have their own Truvis, but I wasn't made aware that he had any left because it's quite an old ball. I think it's a 2020 ball. But on social media, uh, I commented saying, if you got any more? And he said that we have a dozen of them. And that was amazing. And so what I did was I uh, got in the community, probably most of you that are watching this right now. And I said, look, I'll get 12. And I got them shipped all the way from Japan. Some have gone to the UK. Some of them have got to the US. But it's just another really good example of what being in the community is doing because it's making it you know it's letting all the good collectors get hold of the good balls and not having to pay through the nose stiffcon skull with their japanese logo underneath and the number 777 this ball is killer love this ball uh second ball that i'm going to share with you is this one uh, which is Royal Port Rush, but this one's in maroon. Now, the blue one we see um, quite often, but the maroon one is one that I've never been able to get hold of. I had a chat with Dan at the beginning of the year saying, right, this year I'm definitely going to get me a sleeve. <laughs> and it's taken me 11 months, uh, but I finally managed to get it. I actually called up the pro shop and got them to send it to me, but they sent me the blue ones. Um, and I said, oh, so can I send these back? Can you send me the maroon ones? And they were so nice. They're like, look, we'll just send you a, a sleeve of the maroon ones. Um, keep hold of the blue ones. So um, they were really, really generous about that. And I can't thank them enough. But I think the maroon one Port Rush is actually better than the blue one. But together on the display, they're going to look great. Uh, next one... Um, I think I've got so many balls right now. I've got a box of like 
80 to share with you over the next couple of weeks. I've, I think I've got about another 30 coming in the post as well. So this is gonna, uh, if, if, if you're due a shout out and I don't get the right shout out or I forget, please, please forgive me because I've just got so much right now. This is Bearwood Lakes uh, um, from the UK. I think Phil got me this. Um, it might have been Peter. Sorry, Peter, if it was you. This ball is it is a nice ball. It's nice for a UK ball, but I just think it's not very strong. Obviously, you can't see it on the camera very well. It's just Bearwood Lakes in there. It's a small logo of... I couldn't tell you. I genuinely couldn't tell you. But for a UK ball, uh, it's different. It's very different to all the other ones out there, so I like that one. Uh, the next two may have appeared on a previous channel, um, on, a, on a previous episode. The first one is La Reserva. Um, I've now had this ball three times and I've traded it twice. And this is the one that I'm finally going to keep. Not that the other two weren't mint, but I just I know other people really value this ball. Uh, La Reserva, really nice ball with their logo on gold. Um, the last one that I'm going to share with you today is Dominion. Uh, which is this one with the number 84. And as gold balls go, um, it's probably one of the best. It's just super bold. You can recognise it off the bat. It is a solid ball. Dominion. Right, so what I want to do um, is, obviously, we've covered Truvis. We've covered the build of the cabin, uh, the Truvis lab. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the company that provide the building because I'm hoping there are some people out there that may be interested in Dunster House and I just wanted to share some of my um, my thoughts. Now, first of all, I don't have the technical ability to do this by myself. I knew that going off the bat. I don't have the tools. I don't have the knowledge. So I got hold of a guy in York about four months ago saying, look, can I get you to put together this prefab for me? And he was great. He contacted me regularly. Any idea when it's coming? But then when it came to delivery, he ghosted me. Now, I had the delivery out the front with a tarp over it, but it was raining a lot. And I'm like, I'm, this, some of this stuff's going to get damaged if I don't get this building up. So I put a advert in the, on a Facebook group and a guy from Hull came over and he seemed to know what he was talking about. And... I'm not going to say the word cowboy, but I'm going to tell you a few stories that I wish I didn't get him to do it. So anyway, long and short of it, during the day he puts up the building, I get very excited, I pay, but as time goes on it becomes very aware that there are a few things that were not done the way they should have been. And I wanted to share those with you. First of all, first huge mistake that he made was the membrane. He put the whole build on the timber base and he didn't put the membrane down first. Now, I'm clever enough to know the water rises, but in the pictures on the Dunster House website, there is the timber base at the bottom, but he should have put the membrane under first so the water doesn't rise. That was my first problem. Now to resolve that, I bought um, membrane strips that are about this long, they're heavy duty, and we literally just kept gently picking up the building, sliding member, uh, membrane under each of, the, each of the foundation timbers, stapling them up. So if water does get in underneath, the membrane will protect it, not only from coming up the bottom, but say if it starts to puddle, the membrane is up the side of all the wood. So the water will not be able to enter the wood from rising up. It's a brand new patio. I'm hoping it shouldn't, but it's protected. What I've also done is I've actually gone to a local plastic supplier to buy um, skirting for the outside that wasn't supplied in the purchase that I made from Dunster House. Now it cost me like 20 quid and you buy the sealant and you whack it on and then you silicone around the outside and 
is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, it comes in anthracite grey, which is the colour of the doors and the windows. So it looks like the real deal. And I'm quite surprised I actually managed to do it myself. You know, I had to cut a few of the... The, the the beams uh, on the outside but you know I've got it in there and I've um, and I've sealed it and it works really well so if you're looking to buy one of these two by eight by two by two um, I've forgotten the name of the actual house I'll make sure I put it in the comments um, but I highly recommend that you buy that anthracite grey skirting around the outside because then you know it's not coming in the timber from the outside and it's not coming in from the bottom. The next thing uh, that the cowboy uh, did was inside here, you won't be able to see it on here, but he's stapled all over. Now the cladding on this prefab is insulated. Now him going in with the staples, it's not going to do much for the insulation and I'm quite mad about that because it's what, three degrees outside, 37 if you're in the US, and I need it to be temperate. And I just can't help thinking that, I don't know, 300 staple holes isn't good for the insulation. So he really, really miffed me about that one. And the worst thing that I think he probably did was he left a huge gap in between this panel and this panel and that panel. So I have literally just filled it with um, sealant and I've beaded over the top of it and I've painted it. And it looks really good, but if he would have done it properly, I believe there were some plastic kind of wedges that you slide in, the, 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 um, in between the two panels and that will help insulate it. And I'm quite furious that he managed to get this far without doing that. I mentioned when painting, and painting's really important because there's a better way to do it than I did it. I have literally painted it after it's been built. I've painted the whole thing. Now, this cladding here has got these pinstripes. Now, these pinstripes look good, but they're a nightmare to paint, an absolute nightmare. I can't tell you how difficult it was to paint. So if I were you, you're putting together one of these Dunster House uh, buildings, I would highly recommend before you build it, you get some kind of, whether it's a spray or a, any form that you can coat it from afar and do it before you assemble it. Because once it's up, it's a fair job. I think I, think I spent probably a good part of a day painting the whole thing, uh, including all the, the, the gray bits. Um, but if you are technically good at decorating, I'm sure there's a way that you can just spray and it gets in all the grooves. I've not made a bad job of it at all, but it took me a long time. So that's something to bear in mind. I've installed guttering on the outside. I hope you can see that uh, previously in the, the video. That's really great. Um, I'm really pleased with that. The doors and the windows are really good, but the cowboy, um, didn't align them perfectly so if you actually take the beading around the outside you can see quite a large gap and I've, I've had to fill that in um, and then obviously the roof the roof uh, we got the shingles version but apparently you're supposed to heat the shingles so the tar melts and then it adheres to the roof he also didn't do that um, but looking over the instructions because we've got the membrane the felt and then the shingles the melty bit isn't overly necessary uh, because it's being double um, guided by the, f the felt and the membrane. All in all, I really rate this building. I mean, I paid what, 4150 for the prefab. I reckon I paid 850 for the cowboy. And then I reckon I've spent probably a thousand pounds on the top of that. Now, I was exceptionally lucky that I mentioned in one of the pre-videos uh, that my neighbor Dinesh came and did all the steel conduit and the electric. So the uplighters on the outside and all the power sources have been installed underneath the flooring and they filled up, filled up into the building. There was an armored cable that he dug a trench on the outside, linked it to the house. So 
it is an all singing, all dancing electric cabin. But I was so lucky to have him to do that. The cowboy uh, was supposed to link it up um, with electricity, but I shouldn't have paid him until he'd completed the work. Um, he ghosted me after. He still has a huge bag of bits and bobs that was meant to complete this thing, like screws and fixes. And... Um, he also got he also kept my knife and I think he's got a screwdriver of mine. That part of it was really unpleasant. But the part that's been really pleasant is the fact that I've managed to do quite a lot of it myself that I didn't think I would have been able to do. So if you are considering buying a Dunster House uh, prefab building for your garden, whether it be an office or a playroom or whatever, do give it serious consideration. You will need a good quality drill. Um, you will need to be able to read instructions. You will definitely need a second body to hold panels, to fix panels. Um, the timber on the base will need to be screwed together and you will need some kind of expertise. But you can do it you really can it's it's if if you like a project it's a really really good project and i i know i was overwhelmed by thinking about doing it myself but if i could go back i certainly would because i would certainly start with a membrane working up i wouldn't you just use the membrane that they provide with the building i'd buy the heavy duty membrane strips because then you can fold it around and ultimately completely protect them um i would certainly paint before i built it because that's going to save hours um and i'd obviously recommend buying the outside um, pvc skirting just to help with keeping the water out but it also looks really good the grey anthracite with the windows and the doors and I've painted around the top it looks really good so if you are watching all about Truvis for the Dunster house part I'm really sorry about the uh, talking about golf balls it is a very niche channel um, and we don't have many subscribers but if you are here for the dance the house please do contact me in the comments if you have any questions or any guidance i am not a builder i will never claim to be one so please don't ask me for advice um as if i were a wizard um just i'm i'm happy to talk about it but i'm not going to be able to help you with questions about leveling or any of that stuff but i'd love to help in any way i can because this has been this is a really key part of my um, really small YouTube channel and um, Dunster House providing this for me, obviously it cost me, but there are a lot of cheaper options out there. But the fact that this is insulated, it's come double glazed, it's got flooring and roofing, it's, it, it's, it's really good. I mean, I'm sat here at, at five o'clock in the evening and it is, I've got the heating on. It's warm. I can I could live in here. It's not a problem. It's it's an additional room in our house. So I would definitely recommend Dunster House if you wanted to go for a garden room or office. Right. I'm going to leave it there. I reckon with all the pinned videos, this is a 25 minute episode. So God knows if this will ever upload on our Wi-Fi. Um, but thank you so much for joining me here in the Truvis lab it's finally here i'm going to need to start thinking about how i'm going to build um the shelves for the Truvis. if you have any ideas i don't think i can buy something pre-made i'm going to have to commission someone to build me a unit it's gonna need to sit on the floor i can't hang it obviously the walls are insulated the only thing i can put on the walls has to be stuck um, I can't drill into it. So anything that I have my Druvis on, it has to be resting on the floor. But if you've got any ideas, if you know a carpenter that would really like to help in the UK, let me know in the comments. But I am delighted you've made it this far with me. I hope you've been excited as I have for uh, seeing this um, project come to fruit. And... I look forward to sharing, well, at least another 50 balls with you in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, deeks out. Take care. See you later.